Hey everybody, welcome to our series on the book of Titus. Uh, this week we're going to be jumping into chapter 1, and we're going to be looking at the first four verses. Let's go ahead and read the text together. Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the faith of those chosen of God, and the knowledge of the truth which is according to godliness, in the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised long ages ago, but at the proper time manifested even his word in the proclamation with which I was entrusted according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, my true child in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. Uh, boy, this really is uh, an amazing book, and this is a really neat passage as we look at just the introduction. The, this is who's writing the book, and this is who's receiving the book, the letter. Uh, let's look at some <clears throat> observations. First, we see very simply this uh, letter was written by the Apostle Paul, and uh, we learn a couple things about how Paul viewed himself in this uh, letter. Number one, Paul saw himself as a bondservant of God. <clears throat> now, I think that really speaks to the humility that the Apostle Paul had. Uh, he saw himself as a slave of God. He was there <clears throat> just to do whatever it is that God wanted him to do. But listen, Paul also had been uh, given a role in life. God had made him an apostle, and that's kind of the second thing that Paul sees about who he is. Uh, number one, he's a bondservant of God, but secondly, he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. That meant that uh, he had some authority. He had a very important role in the early church. And I just love that you see right off the bat, uh, Paul has a very real humility before God, uh, and yet he has confidence in the, the role and, and the mission that God has given him. He's a bondservant and he's an apostle. Now, what we see next is that uh, Paul says three things as it relates to uh, why it is that God made him an apostle. Uh, let's look together here. Why did God make Paul an apostle? Well, he made Paul an apostle for the faith of those chosen of God. Uh, I think we see two points here. The first uh, is this. Uh, Paul was a missionary. He was a missionary at heart, and he was all about uh, pointing other people to faith in Jesus. That's one of the reasons God made him an apostle, is so that he would point other people to faith. But Paul was also an apostle for this purpose, so that he would build the faith of those who had been chosen of God. That was his role, and boy, did he do that well. He built up the church and the faith of those who believed in Jesus. So that's really kind of the first thing here. Paul was an apostle for the faith of those chosen of God. Uh, and then why else was Paul an apostle? He was an apostle for the knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness. Uh, boy, one of the reasons that God gave the church, the apostle Paul, was so that the church would know God in a deeper way. Man, have you ever read the book of Romans? I mean... Paul in the scriptures, as he writes, speaks so clearly about who God is. And as Christians, we have a better knowledge of what is true. And God chose Paul, a brilliant man, uh, and enabled him and gifted him to share what's true about who God is. Now, by the way, I think it's interesting here, just kind of as, as a side note, that truth is according to to godliness. You know, godliness has kind of fallen on tough times. There are a lot of people who think about what is a godly life? Well, that is so old-fashioned that that is not uh, something to be pursued anymore. Uh, but listen, truth is right in line with godliness. Truth, uh, a godly lifestyle is, you might say, on the right side of history. Uh, it's the truth or the right way to live. 
So Paul is an apostle. Why? For the faith of those chosen of God. Uh, he, he's an apostle to, to help with the knowledge of the truth. And then what is it that fuels Paul as an apostle? Well, he's an apostle in the hope of eternal life. Man, as you think about who Paul was and what he went through, he suffered a lot. I mean, he's in prison. He's uh, ha- suffering shipwrecks, all kinds of things. But what is it that fuels his ministry? Well, what fuels his ministry is the hope of eternal life. So he's an apostle in the hope of eternal life. And he clung to that throughout his ministry. Now, uh, from here on out, Paul talks about uh, a couple of things that God does. uh, And as it relates to eternal life, God does three things as it relates to eternal life. The first is this, God promised eternal life, uh, which God, who cannot lie, promised long ages ago. Uh, Secondly, God didn't just promise eternal life, but the truth about eternal life, he made manifest. He revealed it. And then third, the the message of eternal life, he entrusted uh, to uh, the apostles and here to Paul. Paul talks about how uh, it was by the command of God that he was entrusted with the gospel. So uh, very simply, that's an easy way, I think, for me to organize this Uh, this passage, as it relates to eternal life, listen to what God did. He promised eternal life, and then he made manifest the truth about eternal life, and then he entrusted the gospel, the ministry of the proclamation to uh, the apostle Paul. And so that's what's going on here. By the way, how do we know that eternal life is true and what the Bible says about eternal life is true? Well, we can bank on it because the truth about eternal life was given from God who cannot lie. Man, I don't know about you, but who am I going to trust in life? I'm going to trust the one who can't lie. God is trustworthy because it's impossible for him to lie. The Old Testament and Numbers and then here in Titus and then in Hebrews all mention the fact that God cannot lie. Uh, I think uh, there's something a little bit ironic here because in verse 12, Paul is going to uh, talk about how people, on the other hand, are different. Uh, He's writing to Titus, who's uh, living right now in Crete, and Paul says this pretty bluntly about the Cretans. He said, they're just a bunch of liars, but God is not like man. God is different. God cannot lie. He's trustworthy. When did God make these promises about eternal life? Well, he made these promises long ago. I think the right way to think about this is God made these promises about eternal life before the world began. Boy, that is so amazing to me to think that God had the the whole plan for history in mind even before the world is created. Listen to what Paul says in Ephesians 1, 3, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we would be holy and blameless before him. Do you realize, Christian, that God chose you before the world was even created? That is so amazing to me that to think that God had these promises about eternal life uh, made before the world even began. But at the proper time, at just the right time, he, he made the truth about eternal life manifest. He revealed them. He made them evident and clear for all to see. Uh, uh, The shorthand way of talking about this is just speaking of the gospel. The gospel came. Uh, That's his word. That's the proclamation. And this gospel message was entrusted to Paul, with which I was entrusted. Um, I remember the story of Paul as he's on the road to Damascus and He's dramatically saved and converted. And then as he goes into Damascus, God actually appears to Ananias and says, you need to go to the Apostle Paul because he needs to know how much he's going to suffer for my name. In other words, God had big plans in mind for Paul, not just that he wanted Paul to suffer, but, but that he wanted Paul to serve him in incredible ways throughout the world to bring the gospel to the lost. And so it really was by the command of our God and Savior that Paul was made an apostle. All right, so that's who's writing this letter. But let's talk a little bit about who's receiving the letter. Well, it's Titus. 
Uh, what do we know about Titus? Well, we know that he was a Greek, we know from Galatians, and we know that he was actually uncircumcised. But we get a hint here at Paul's relationship to Titus where he says, my true child in a common faith. Paul would often talk that way about people that he had personally led to the Lord. I think we see here that Paul has a very close, very tight-knit relationship with Titus, his true child in a common faith. Uh, what does this mean, a common faith? Well, think about it like this. Here you have Paul, and he's like the poster child for Judaism. I mean, circumcised on the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin. Uh, he's the Hebrew of Hebrews. And then you have Titus, an uncircumcised Greek. And yet here they are, united in a common faith. Boy, that's so amazing to me that the gospel unites uh, Jew and Gentile together. So he's writing this to my true child in the common faith. And then he's, he's asking God, he's praying for grace and peace to come from God, the Father, and from Jesus, from Christ Jesus, our Savior. And that's what he wants for Titus. Uh, boy, this is just the introduction. And there's uh, really some amazing things going on. But there's so much more in store in our series through the book of Titus. I hope you guys will join us again next time.